Hi everyone, this is Professor M. Das Science, and today I want to discuss symmetric and antisymmetric states in another one of our videos on rigorous quantum mechanics. In quantum systems of identical particles, exchanging any two particles leads to exactly the same physics. And this can happen in two ways. Symmetric states are quantum states that don't change at all when you exchange two particles. Antisymmetric states are states that only change by a sign when you exchange two particles. It may sound like a trivial preoccupation, but these states play a fundamental role in quantum mechanics. They capture the key difference between bosons and fermions. In this video we'll do three things. First, we will learn what symmetric and antisymmetric states are. Second, we will learn how to build symmetric and antisymmetric states. And third, we will learn about related concept, symmetric operators. So let's go! Let's consider an n-particle system and the state space V made of the tensor product over n single particle state spaces. Let's also consider the n-factorial permutation operators P alpha associated with n particles. We first define a totally symmetric state psi plus. If P alpha acting on a state psi plus gives psi plus for any alpha, then this state is a totally symmetric state. Conceptually, this means that applying any permutation of the n particles gives back the same state we started with. Totally symmetric states live in a subspace of the full state space called V+. Next, let's define a totally anti-symmetric state, psi minus. If P alpha acting on a state psi minus gives eta alpha psi minus for any alpha, where eta alpha is plus one if P alpha is an even permutation, and minus one if P alpha is an odd permutation, then psi minus is a totally antisymmetric state. Remember from the video on permutation operators that the parity of a permutation is the parity of the number of transpositions into which we can write out a permutation. Conceptually, this means that the permutation of the n particles gives back the same state we started with if the permutation corresponds to exchanging pairs of particles an even number of times, and the negative of the state we started with if the permutation corresponds to exchanging pairs of particles an odd number of times. Totally antisymmetric states live in a subspace of the full state space called V-. So why do we care about these totally symmetric and totally antisymmetric states? In the video on the symmetrization postulate, I explain how identical particles in quantum mechanics can only be in either totally symmetric or totally antisymmetric states. So these states are fundamental in studying quantum systems of more than one particle, and what I want to do in the rest of the video is to figure out how to build totally symmetric and totally antisymmetric states. To build totally symmetric and totally antisymmetric states, we first define two new operators that project an arbitrary state onto the two subspaces V plus and V minus spanned by these states. We first define the operator S plus as equal to one over N factorial sum over alpha of P alpha where the sum runs over all possible n factorial permutations. The operator S plus projects onto V plus, so it creates totally symmetric states and we call it the symmetrizer. We also define S minus as equal to one over n factorial sum over alpha of eta alpha P alpha, where again the sum runs over all possible n factorial permutations. S minus projects onto V minus, so it creates totally anti-symmetric states and we call it the anti-symmetrizer. To show that these two operators do what their name claims they do, we first need to show that they are projection operators. To do this, remember from the video on projection operators that this means we have to show that these two operators square to themselves. However, before we can prove this, we need to prove an intermediate result. For an arbitrary permutation P alpha, we have P alpha S plus equals S plus P alpha and both equal S plus. To prove this, let's consider the product of P alpha and S plus, which we write out explicitly using the definition above. Taking P alpha inside the sum, we obtain this expression. At this point, we need to remember the rearrangement theorem from group theory that I discussed in the video on permutation operators. The rearrangement theorem says that multiplying a list of all elements of a group by one of the group elements, in this case P alpha, gives another list in which all the group elements appear once and only once, simply in a different order. In our case, because this beta sum is over all elements, and the action of P alpha simply rearranges the terms, then the sum doesn't change and we obtain S plus again. This completes the proof that P alpha S plus equals S plus. The same argument can be shown to prove that S plus P alpha equals S plus. We can also write down a similar expression for S minus like this, and the proof is analogous, so I won't repeat it. 
With these results, we're now ready to calculate s plus squared. It is s plus times s plus. We can write out the first s plus explicitly to get this. We can then move the second s plus inside the sum because it doesn't explicitly depend on alpha. And we get this. This term is simply the one up here, and we just showed it equals s plus. So we get this. s plus doesn't explicitly depend on alpha, so we can take it out, and we get this. This term is 1, because the sum has n factorial terms, as there are a total of n factorial permutations alpha, and we're therefore dividing n factorial by n factorial. Finally, we get s plus. We can do the same to show that s minus squared is equal to s minus. And then these two results confirm that the symmetrizer and anti-symmetrizer are projection operators. Using a similar proof, we can also show that s plus s minus equals 0, so that they project to orthogonal subspaces. And finally, adding s plus and s minus is not equal to the identity unless n equals 2. To show this, you can try out the sum explicitly for the n equals 2 and n equals 3 cases. What this means is that the two projectors don't project to complementary subspaces. Now that we know that the s operators are projection operators, all we have left to show is that they respectively project an arbitrary state onto a totally symmetric and a totally antisymmetric state. To see this, we consider a ket psi prime obtained by the action of s plus on an arbitrary ket psi. We then consider the action of an arbitrary permutation p alpha on psi prime. We can then write psi prime out explicitly like this. Then we can use this property up here to simplify it to this. And it is simply psi prime. This means that as claimed, psi prime is a totally symmetric state. For s minus, we can define a psi prime prime like this. We can then apply the permutation operator p alpha on psi prime prime, then insert the definition of psi prime prime, then use the second relation up here to get this, and it is eta alpha psi prime prime. This allows us to confirm that s minus psi is a totally antisymmetric state. Overall, the symmetrizer and antisymmetrizer are the operators that allow us to build, starting from arbitrary states, totally symmetric and totally antisymmetric states. Another important property is that the symmetrizer acting on any permutation of a ket psi gives the same totally symmetric ket. This can be shown by acting with s plus on a permutation p alpha of psi. Then again, using the fact that this gives s plus, the expression simplifies to this. So again, what does this mean? Any permutation of a ket projects to the same totally symmetric state. For the anti-symmetrizer acting on a permutation of psi, we get a similar result. So that any permutation of a ket projects to the same totally anti-symmetric state, possibly up to a sign. After discussing the relation between permutations and totally symmetric and antisymmetric states, we need to consider what happens to observables. Let's start with a simple example corresponding to a two-particle system. In this case, the permutation operator, p to 1, exchanges the two particles. Consider a Hermitian operator, a1, that acts on the single particle state space v1, and whose eigenvalue equation is a1 acting on eigenstate ui equals eigenvalue ai multiplying eigenstate ui. A1 is Hermitian, so its eigenstates form a basis of V1. There is also an operator A2 acting on V2 with the corresponding eigenvalue equation, and the eigenstates also form a basis for V2. Now promote A1 to act on the tensor product state space V as usual, and I will use this simplified notation omitting the identity operator, and we can similarly promote A2 to act on V. To understand the interplay between permutations and general operators, we start by considering the combination p to 1, a1, p to 1 dagger. We consider its action on a basis state of v, which we can build as the tensor product of the eigenstates of a1 and a2. As p to 1 is Hermitian, then it is simply the action of the permutation operator, so we get this expression where the particles are essentially exchanged. Then we get the action of a1 on the eigenstates from v1, which gives this. And finally, we act with the p to 1 permutation operator to exchange the particles back. In parallel, consider the action of a2 on the same basis state. a2 acts on the basis ket in v2, and we obtain this expression. 
Comparing these two expressions, we see that they are the same, so that p21 a1 p21 dagger is equal to a2. In a similar way, we can show that p21 a2 p21 dagger is equal to a1. So what does this mean? The permutation operator exchanges the action of an operator from v1 to v2, and vice versa. These two results for the action of the permutation operator on operators that act only on v1 or only on v2 generalizes to operators that act in the full tensor product state space v. For example, consider the operator c12, which is the sum over a1 and b2. Remember that what we really mean by this is the sum of the tensor product of a1 with the identity in v2 and the tensor product of the identity in v1 with b2. To see how c12 transforms under the permutation operator, we start by explicitly writing out c12 in terms of a1 and b2, then we carry out the multiplication to get this, then we get the action of the permutation operator on a1 and b2 to get this, and finally we can rewrite it as c21. We can do the same for an operator d12 that is a product of a1 and b2. Looking at how it transforms under a permutation, we start with this, then we write out d12, we can then insert p21 dagger p21 in the middle here, and we can do this as this is the identity operator because p21 is a unitary operator. Then we can group the terms like this, and we get a2b1 that we can finally rewrite as d21. Putting these results together, we can write down this general statement about an observable O12 acting in V that can be written in terms of observables that act on V1 and V2. We're now ready to define symmetric observables. A symmetric observable is an observable for which O12 is equal to O21. This definition is in fact equivalent to saying that a symmetric observable is one that commutes with the permutation operator. To see this, consider the action of the permutation operator on O12, which gives O21. We then insist that the observable is symmetric, so it is equal to O12. We can then multiply by P21 from the right on both sides of the equation, and we get this. This term gives simply the identity because P21 is unitary, so we obtain that P21 O12 is equal to O12 P21. This implies that an observable that commutes with the permutation operator is a symmetric observable. We can generalize these results to systems of n particles, and we define a totally symmetric observable under exchange of indices as one that commutes with all permutations for the n particle system. Before we wrap up, I want to emphasize the importance of the ideas we have discussed today, and you absolutely need to remember the following. A state psi plus onto which any permutation p alpha acts like this is called a totally symmetric state. What this means, conceptually, is that in a totally symmetric state, exchanging any two particles gives back the same state. Additionally, the operator s plus, called the symmetrizer, is the operator that allows us to build a totally symmetric state by applying it to an arbitrary state. Similarly, a state psi minus onto which any permutation p alpha acts like this where eta alpha is the parity of the permutation, is called a totally antisymmetric state. What this means conceptually is that in a totally antisymmetric state, exchanging any two particles gives back the same state with an extra minus sign, so that overall exchanging pairs of particles an odd number of times gives an overall minus sign, and exchanging particles an even number of times gives the same state back. The operator S minus, called the antisymmetrizer, is the operator that allows us to build a totally antisymmetric state. Totally symmetric and totally antisymmetric states are the only allowed states of systems of identical particles. This means they are fundamental in areas ranging from condensed matter physics, material science to chemistry because they all involve multiparticle systems. To continue your path in learning about these exciting areas, the next thing you should check out is the video on the symmetrization postulate, which relates symmetric and antisymmetric states with bosons and fermions. If you liked the video or would like to send me suggestions for future videos, please subscribe.